Welcome to Clearly Georgia. I'm Deborah Morton with Cleario Real Estate. And I'm Rich Seglovich with Space in Town. I'm John Anderson with Space in Town. I'm Judy Jernigan with Sage and Grace Realty Group. We're so glad you joined us today. EV chargers are like have to now. Like yeah. in again, in the burbs, we're not in parking garages. Everybody has their garage and having a, a charger for your Tesla or your, your EV, super important. Like it's almost a necessary addition. If yeah. they don't have one, they need one. Really? Yeah. Are you seeing a lot of buyers out there asking for them? Um, I'm seeing a lot of the cars on the roads and if they don't have them, yeah. The buyers in their mind think, well, I've got to add that. So it's, yeah. it's in, that is new, like in the last 12 months. That's, that's not like, that's how new it is, right. but they're everywhere. I think that one of the listings I have right now, I don't think it actually has the, the charger, but I remember when I sold to uh, the guy that's now selling it, that was what they, they made sure to mention that it's already wired and ready to go, you know, kind of pre-wired for that. Yeah, it's definitely a selling feature for, I, well, Judy, what about where you are? No, oh, yeah, we're definitely seeing more and more people who are, that's on their mind. So they're either thinking, does it have it? Where would I add it? Would it be easy for me to add it? Is there an electrical outlet near the, near the garage or near the parking spot? And will the panel hold it? Like, like, does the house have the capacity for it? Because the older houses, I mean, mm -hmm. you know, when you do renovations, yeah, that can be fun. Yeah. <laughs> um, so adding that in, you know, the other thing I'm seeing is or hearing uh, also is people asking about gardening, composting, and gardening. Again, suburbs. So mm -hmm. I don't, I don't know how it is in the city. Well, actually, there, the there's someone composting in this building. Mm -hmm. I think there's a club that they do composting and gardening. I yeah. figure there yeah. might be yeah. because it's a thing. So a lot of the newer mm -hmm. neighborhoods are doing community gardens, and mm -hmm. you can compost oh, and cool. do like shared garden space. Um, some of the communities are have like Kennesaw has a community garden where you can come in and have a, a section of your garden, but in, in houses now, terraced beds and terraced gardening, and it's, cool. it's pretty fun. To, yeah. And so I grew up in a family where that was a thing. We were green before green was a thing. Mm -hmm. My mom was a hippie. And <laughs> so I'm like, oh wow, I do know about all this. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if this is related, but you made me think of, I've been hearing about like apps and stuff where you can, um, you can uh, share your pool. So you can like, you could, if you don't have a pool, you can get on and you could um, almost like Airbnb somebody's pool for the afternoon You're and take kidding. your kids. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I heard of a news. I don't know if it's happening around here, but it was an interesting concept. I was like, oh, okay. I could see the shared gardening spaces, but. Yeah, the shared pool. Yeah. <laughs> get like your liability. kids out of my pool. Yeah, right. <laughs> I have um, clients asking more and more about things like, are the windows new? Are they energy efficient? And um, caring about insulation more this year than I've had in the past years. Again, just sort of in looking for ways to be energy efficient. I think it's with the uh, economy change. People are asking questions about energy efficiency because the cost of everything has gotten must be because yeah, it's more than I've seen in the past asking about those things. And I think it, they're very good questions. I'm glad people are asking and thinking about it. I can look right past a tile backsplash and go straight for the blown insulation. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I think part of it's just too uh, news and education that it's just talked about more. So I think it's become just more, uh, just bringing it to the conscious awareness of people just in general, that they're just more aware of it mm -hmm. and wanting to do their part. I showed a home the other day that had a solar panel heater for um, the pool water. And they were, my clients were so excited to see that a passive, cost-effective way to heat the pool. It's not going to be as mighty as a gas heater for the water, but it's going to... All it has to do is take the edge off. Yeah. I love smart appliances. I walk, yeah. in, I walk in my... Well, appliances, like, I don't know about every appliance, but, like, I walk in and I say, Alexa, I'm home, and all the lights come on, and... 
you know, you can do so many different settings. I think about like, I don't know why it comes to mind, like sometimes when I think of Star Trek and they say execute uh, alpha something. And so I have things set up where I'll tell it something, a certain phrase, and it'll dim these lights and turn these lights on. And some of the lights will turn different colors and it sets a mood. Does it, uh, does it play music too? It can do that. Like when I say get up in the morning. You got your mood I music. I say good morning, Alexa. <laughs> so good morning, fun. Alexa. She starts feeding me my news and the TV turns on. And so I, I think that kind of stuff is kind of fun. I actually thought about starting a, a business for realtors where I will, if you have a listing, especially a large listing that takes forever to turn lights on and maybe you have to go to showings, that I'll come and smart light the house, put a Wi-Fi hotspot and give you an app and you can rent this from me. And then that way you can turn all the lights on in the house, turn all the lights off in the house. God, that would be wonderful. I know, right? Let's, let's do it. And it needs a, a, a something to have the good, fresh, clean smell come mm -hmm. at the same time. That should, yeah, exactly. Right. I'm sure they have some. Well, actually, yeah, I know they have smart stuff like that because one of my clients had one. Mm -hmm. And actually, he had, he had a, I don't know if he could change the sense or whatever, but he had a remote control for the, the sense. I'm not quite sure how it worked. That would be cool. Yeah. I, I'm slow, to, late to the game, but I just got my my uh, robot vacuum. Really? Do you like it? I love it. <laughs> I don't know how anybody lives without one now that I've got one. Is it a Zoom or Roomba? <laughs> yeah, it's, I got the shark and it's awesome, uh -huh. but I, I, I start it up before I get home. So when I get home, it's everything is nice, nice and tidy. It I have dogs, they would eat it. That's. Oh no, I have dogs and yeah. it's, they got over it very quickly and. That makes me think I could possibly get a dog if I had something like that helping me with keeping my home clean. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, and I kind of like just like the thought that I have a robot working for me. Like, you know, speaking of Star Trek. Yeah, yeah. You know, I like the Jetsons when I was a kid. So, you know, I had Astro and have a little robot made, I'm ready. Bring it, AI. Well, I know, and there, I don't know how, if this is, if it's come yet, but supposedly, you know, they have refrigerators with cameras inside the refrigerator and it can reorder things that you're out of, you know, as, as you run out of things. Your smart list. Yeah, I guess so. And, but it, it does it automatically for you if you set it on AI. So I was in a house, uh, one of our new listings has a new, uh, it's a KitchenAid professional, like a, a the high-end line KitchenAid six burner gas stove, but it has a Wi-Fi connection on it. So I'm curious if that was just for the oven. I like, I'm, I need to read up and figure out what, what would be Wi-Fi on a gas well, I've seen a Wolf Range, you know, oven that ha that actually had a refri. It would ref you could put a casserole in, and it would refrigerate. But yeah, I guess it had a refrigerated function where it would keep the inside cool, and yeah. and then heat. You know, at a certain time, cook your dinner, and you get there, and it's all ready for you. So uh, maybe maybe for something like that for automatically cooking, but I don't know. But I'm gonna find out. <laughs> I'm joining this gym that does high intensity interval training. Hit. Hit, yeah. So um, those are my two personal New Year's resolutions that I'm going to kick off on so January. I'll check 6th. in on you on like January fifth or sixth. Yeah. See, see if I've if I've even made it. Yeah, if I've even started. Well, you told me now. I'm going to have to. Yeah. yeah. No, it's definitely. That's me. Like, like if you have a bruise, I'm going to poke it. Uh, <laughs> well, you, you guys, anybody have a New Year's resolution, or do you? Is everybody? Do, are you one of those people that? like a lot of Americans and people in the world that it's the same ones every year because you never finish them. <laughs> I'm not sort of big on that. I don't know. What about you? I, I, I am the dork that I don't wait till January 1st. I do every quarter. I try to do like a 12 week year. There, that's a really good book. But um, so my quarterly planning every year, if you break your whole life down into 12 week chunks, mm. you get a new resolution at the start of every quarter. Mm. And in 12 weeks time, it's enough time to secure a new habit. So habit stacking, that comes from Atomic Habits. That's another good book. So every 12 weeks, you're stacking one new habit and mm. evaluating what, what worked and what didn't from the, from the 12 weeks before. Mm. It's like, what do I need to, to add? What do I need to drop, stop doing. What do I need to start doing? What do I need to stop doing? What do I need to, to improve? Um, 
Like that's a it's a quarterly thing. I so told you, I'm, I'm a complete dork. It's okay. What's your quarterly? <laughs> oh, every quarter there's five. So, oh, okay. yeah, and I try to keep it to like a health and wellness, <laughs> a spirituality, business, um, relationships, and. That's good, I think, because that way, if, you know, because everybody starts, you know, a lot of people, we start resolutions and then three weeks in, you've, you've not done it. So then you're like, you give up. And so with that, you have you get to try again before waiting a whole 12 months. So, and if you take it, if you take your, your 12 weeks, I mean, you break it down into, yeah. So on a monthly basis, you can do anything for a month. It's not as overwhelming as a new right. year's resolution. Right. So, and then that month is really only four weeks. So can you do it for a week? Instead of saying, I'm going to have a dry first quarter, I would have, I'm gonna have a dry week. Yeah. For me. And how did it go? <laughs> oh, I didn't promise that. <laughs> so, but I mean, that's also my reward. You have to reward yourself. Like when you've done something, like when I, I have a sweet tooth, I love chocolate. So when I go, no chocolate, no chocolate, no chocolate, well, red wine. <laughs> or bourbon, whatever. Oh. So I'm, I'm constantly the, like, yeah. if I do this, I get this. Right. If I do this, I get this. Right. It's, it's a head game. I, yeah. I told you I'm a dork about it. Hey, but if you figure it out, it, if it works for you, you know, yeah. it's part of the thing is just figuring out what works for you. Yeah. And I, for me, I don't like taking on huge projects that feel insurmountable. So I want to be fit. Well, that 15 minute workout is awesome. It's probably getting to the gym that's gonna keep you from doing it, not actually doing it. Yeah. Right. So how do you fix the getting to the gym part? I joined a gym where you have to, it's a class. So there's a set, set time, there's an instructor, and if you don't show up at your set time, they charge you a second. They charge you for not showing up. <laughs> so yeah, I, it's yeah, if I said it, then I go, cause yeah. And, and that's what I figured out works for me. If I just say I'm going to go to the gym, yeah. eh, that may or may not happen. And then I get there and then 15 minutes in, oh, I did enough, you know, <laughs> but if I got an hour class and everybody's there, you know, I'll get, I'll get that in. So it's, uh, yeah, it's figuring out those little things about what's going to work or what's not going to work. And that's what works for me is, is having a dedicated time and a place and, and a penalty. <laughs> a penalty. I've told myself just to get to the gym. You don't have to work out. You can just enjoy the hot tub or the sauna or the steam room, and that'll get me there. And then I, I've never then actually you not work worked out. Because yeah. mm -hmm. you're not going to go to the gym and not do something. So once you get there, as you said, that's the hard part. So once I get there, I'm motivated. It's like, okay, yeah, it'd be fun to. I think that's the trick. It's like, like people who don't make their bed, like it's once you're out of bed and you're gone, you're not going to come back and make your bed. So figure out what keeps you from making your bed. You, as soon as you get a bed, make it like, okay, check that's done. Right. Move along. Why make it when I'm just going to make it? I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny that you said that I actually made my bed this morning as soon as I got out of it. Mm -hmm. And I, and it, yeah, I, I thought I should do that tomorrow too. It, it, because, because it's easy and it's done and you don't have to think about it. But I mean, any habit I think can be looked at that way. One of my resolutions is to do more walking and I really like walking and talking. So I'll be making my phone calls, keeping up on my business, keeping in touch with my friends, my clients, and, um, and getting my walks in. So that's something I'm trying to, trying to start. Walk and talk. Walk and talk. Thanks so much for joining us. Follow along, like, and subscribe on YouTube or follow along on your favorite podcast, wherever you listen. And we look forward to joining you next time.